Hey everyone, so it's been more than a year since my last video. I think the last one I sent a rocket up on a balloon and I lost it and never quite was able to find it. Um, so what have I been doing for the last year? Well, in the past I've done rocketry and raccoons. I've done a bunch of stuff with chemistry and hydrogen peroxide, people like that. For the last year or so I've been working on wireless power and I actually made a product for short range wireless power and it's right there. That guy right there is sending power from my indoor outlet uh, through the window to an outdoor Nest Cam. Let me show you real quick. If I can. And this video will be about the design process of that. Okay, so this is the power mole. It consists of a transmitter and a receiver. And this is kind of an earlier prototype, not the production level one I showed a second ago. Uh, but I'll illustrate what it does uh, with some uh, USB lights. Basically, uh, you know, if there's a window between the two, I can bring these together and the lights will turn on. Power is flowing. Uh, some of the magnetic fields, just like your wireless charger. So for instance, you can put your hand in here all day. You never feel anything. There's nothing there. Uh, it works from zero millimeters all the way up to about 32.4. So thick enough for double pane windows and all that. Um, so here's, you know, wood. Cause this, it'll send power through plastic, wood, air, cloth, whatever. Um, about a little over 30 millimeters here. Um, see if it can do it. But oh, there it is. So yeah, so this will send about 10 watts of power through a pretty thick window. And this is mainly for cameras. Uh, cameras and any other five volt device you might want to power. But that's about it. So this product I'm going to talk, or this video, I'll talk more about the design of it. So I'm selling this device on Kickstarter now. So if you'd like to take a look or learn more about it, uh, check it out. There's a link below and you can follow or order one or whatever you want to do. All right, first let's talk about the product development process. It starts with an idea. Uh, so the idea for this is I noticed a lot of people drilling holes to install uh, outdoor products like cameras into indoor outlets because they don't have outdoor uh, outlets. And so I thought, oh, you know, what about extending like magnetic field coupling used in wireless charging to longer ranges? So I do run another channel about antennas. I happen to know a lot about antennas and consumer electronics. So the idea is I could just scale that up. And that's how it started. Um, so the first thing I want to do once I have the idea and the thesis on why I'm building the product and what I want to do is, um, you know, basically, uh, very preliminary, not even a prototype, but almost like a development board. So I use a Raspberry Pi to basically control some electronics and try to figure out what size of antenna I need and, you know, basically make a proof of concept. And I try a bunch of sizes and get the antenna right. And that's the very first stage. That's really a proof of concept. Say, hey, this will work. Or from a development board to a pre-proto. And here, I, you know, I select a MCU, a microcontroller that's going to uh, enable me to develop this without the Raspberry Pi because the Raspberry Pi doesn't make for an actual real product and then develop the schematic and start making not quite a form factor in the sense that's what it's going to look like but more real uh, and closer to what it's ultimately going to be. So choose MCU. I happen to like ST Micro because I've worked with them in the past. I choose the cheapest uh, microcontroller I could find which is the STM8, um, STM8S. Uh, start building mechanicals. So I didn't have the very first prototype printing. I was like experimenting with different diameters and how this would come together and start iterating on that, but it's not quite a final form factor or anything. Um, you know, and just start figuring out how this thing's going to come together. How are you going to write the firmware? I know this thing will work in principle, but moving it along to closer to like uh, being a manufacturable, workable product. So from this pre-proto stage, uh, start moving to like an actual prototype stage. And that's where things are starting to look like they're actually gonna look when they ship. Um, but it's the first time you're doing like a form factor that for the PCB that will fit into a housing that somewhat looks like what you're gonna build. Um, you know, you've tried a bunch of antennas and you start talking to antenna suppliers to figure out what they can make and that you know about what the size is gonna be. And in parallel, you're continuing to uh, iterate on you know, how this thing is going to come together. You're finding a ton of bugs at the prototype stage. And you might do it with several different boards. So I have a transmitter receiver. I think I did two boards for each as I'm iterating and finding, so, oh, that just didn't work and move on. 
After your prototype stage, you get to what's called in consumer electronics the EVT stage. That's where uh, things are looking very mature. You have final antennas and your uh, circuit board is very uh, well done. You have power adapters. The firmware's uh, done. A lot of you know the mechanical, the industrial design, uh, the iteration on the schematic and the antenna and the you know DFM. It's all. Uh, starting to converge. That's the EVT stage, but I haven't done anything with CERT. And so that's next is I actually took this thing to the CERT lab and did some tests for FCC, like exposure. There's a magnetic field limit when you're, um, you know, for devices that will be sold in consumer electronics. That was the first thing I, I was testing. And fortunately, that was actually well below the limit. And then a bunch of other stuff like radiated emissions and stuff you can test. You don't need that to do a Kickstarter, but it's good if you want to eventually scale it up. Um, so EVT, and then I did a couple different rounds and I found some, you know, there's always new bugs you're finding as you, as I looked at different cameras, this would work for some cameras and not others. Um, there's just the way these two devices talk to each other. It wasn't robust for certain cameras. And so I had to, um, you know, add more circuitry and more, uh, checks in place. Um, and then I added something called foreign object detection, where there's a piece of metal between the two devices. I found I could really heat up stainless steel. So I had to, uh, you know, kind of have a circuit and software fix where I could detect that. And so the product would be much safer. I just won't just blast energy. The two sides will talk back and forth. After EVT, after CERT, you know, I start spraying this thing with water and looking for bugs. Then comes DVT, which is a design validation test. That's really just before production and you're really trying to say okay i'm assembling these i have suppliers they're sending me the stuff i have the final form factors i've made a bunch of these and everything's looking good and after that when you've done you have a bunch of these on the wall all your friends have made fun of the product you still like it at that point you're ready for production and that's where i am right now but that's kind of an overview of the whole product development process at least according to me and you end up with boxes and boxes of parts and stuff. And then the really hard part beyond the engineering, which is not the limiter, is how can you market this? Can you sell it? Do you have a market? And that's the stage I'm trying to figure out. I can build the product. It can accomplish the goals that I set out. But can I sell it? Do people actually want it? And that turns out to often be the hardest part in product development. So let's see how it goes.